Hello everyone, this is the IT guy. Thank you for tuning into my channel and this clip. This in this clip I'm going to show you how to recover from a situation where you have forgotten password or you don't have the password for every, a Solaris box. This can happen for different reasons. Uh, it could be just simply that you've forgotten it or uh, you've had you in, you've inherited a box uh, which was managed by someone else and he has forgotten to give you the root password or situations like this so what you might need to do first you might make sure uh, that the box is booted from a live ISO image or if it is a physical device you might do that um, on a physical box make sure that this it is booted from a installation CD uh, with the red hat there is an easier choice you don't have to boot it from installation uh, with Solaris you need the image uh, I haven't seen any method that you can do without having access to an image uh, which is good in a case uh, but you know like so for example if you've got an intruder into your property or business property uh, just not having the ISO image around that can prevent him but uh, anyway having a physical access that means you know he can do uh, many other things to get access to your disk unless your disk is encrypted so uh, in either case uh, from the security perspective uh, they allow us the developers allow us to change the password because it is assumed that once you have the physical access to your device or box then you are the owner of the box unless as I said you know you can encrypt it to prevent people from doing anything on it now with this virtual box that I have here uh, I have a live DVD file which is configured as an optical device for the box uh, you can easily do it or what I'll do I'll just remove it right and then now uh, I I add it again so you can either click on this icon or you can just click on on this icon and up optical device to your SATA controller um, so I go choose disk and I've got a couple of ISO images and that's what I want the Solaris 11 live ISO and open so it's there again now if I go and boot this it can boot still from the hard disk so I need to make sure that it is not so I untick go to the system untick tick optical and then say ok so it takes a couple of seconds to save it and then it will go to boot process so once in the boot process in fact even if you forget and just leave it like this one also uh, there is a way to make it boot from optical as well if you don't do it here uh, but I prefer to do it here uh, so that I don't miss that um, little opportunity that I have to make make the box boot from CD. Let me just show you how it is first and then uh, we go back and do the other way. So when you boot your box in VirtualBox, uh, I'm sure VMware also because this is x86 box, so x86 box they usually come with this thing at the beginning so you have to quickly uh, hit F12 and then you can you can boot from uh, the other devices like CD-ROM and it 
voila, it boots from CD-ROM. So at the moment, I I didn't want to do it. The reason is just let me power it off again. The reason is that um, you have to be, you know, prompt and quick and watch it. And this way, you don't have to. You just say, okay, just boot it from floppy and okay, and then when you do it, then you don't have to worry about this F12 thing. It just goes and boots from CD without me intervening. So here, what I don't want to do, I don't want to go to the graphical interface or anything like that. So I just go to text console. That will give me a quicker access and enter. So after it goes through the boot process, you might accept a couple of defaults before you get to the console. Uh, it's probing. Okay, that's you accept this one. You accept this one. Let it be default unless you want to change it to German or other language. And then it comes to the login prompt. And when it is in the login prompt, you use the username Jack and the password Jack to get into the shell. And once you are there, you need to sudo su because you want to do the password. I usually use the dash as well. So, and the password is Jack again. So that way it becomes a more of a root looking shell. Now, what we need we need to do, we need to first make sure that the Z pool is imported. So, um, I've outlined it in this text. Uh, the steps I'm going to use. And Z pool import minus F R pool. Because otherwise the BADM command is not going to work after that to mount the root file system. Then BADM, we do a mount and the type of type is Solaris slash A. That's where we mount it and it's going to be mounted on A. So we go to A and that's where our root file system is. Now, all we need to do, we need to go to the etc. And we can add uh, password file. Okay, so uh, we, I, I do have my user as the IT guy, the last one. So that's also where I had forgotten my password. And I can clear that. I was there in my admin admin username. Therefore, if I do grab the IT guy shadow, yeah, that's the the hashed version of my password. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna do. I'm going to edit the shadow file, go to the last part. So here is the hash part, and I'm just changing the hashed, hashed part, nothing else. And it's the biggest one, biggest field in that record. Okay, so now it's cleared. So I might have done something also. Let me just do a U and see what I have done. Uh, now actually, let me queue it easier because I might have deleted the I thought there should be a field for the username after the hashed bit, but obviously it's not here. So that instructions I pasted there, it's probably an old document. So 
Um, this doesn't have, or maybe wrong, maybe mistaken, but the, there was no ID for the user here. It just says no password for some of them, and this guy doesn't have that field because there is a password. All right. Anyway, we just um. X, 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 and then X, oh, WQ, and then this guy, so, anyway, we cut the shadow file to make sure there's no surprises there, so what's, once we have that, and uh, we need to go to default, And the I login, so it, it allows no login password. Um, so we search for pass req, and then we change it to no. A and O. X again. Ah, oh, no. Wq. Let me just try X this, and yeah, it worked. So if I grab Grab for pass R E Q a login and it's now. Now, now after this we need to update the archive boot archive. So I just C D and then boot ADM with the command sub command of update archive minus r slash a so that boot archive is going to be updated and now let's reboot now one thing I forgot I should actually go back to my virtual machine and change the the way it's booting because it's gonna be optical but anyway, when it is optical, you can actually go and do this one. And it will boot from there. So the next time I have to just remember that to change that next time I reboot. It's better to do it now because uh, if, say for example, if this is going to go to production, then you don't, you're not able to change anything while yeah, the system is running because, uh, you know, it's all grayed out when you do this here. Anyway, so it's booting. Um, so the IET guy. Um, skip set up. Yeah, okay, it was quite a while ago, the last time I logged into this box. I've been playing with the Linux boxes since more often than this guy. Okay. And then here, you know, they, the thing is I have also forgotten the root password, so I need to set my root password as well. So therefore, I do sudo su dash and then password root. All right. So I just put the oh that's why <laughs> that's why I've forgotten it. Okay. And of course for the IT guy itself as well, I need to do the pass. Word. Ah. Choose a password that you can remember but also choose a password that 
you can type easily with not much okay anyway so the password is there and I've changed my password as well um, and let me just uh, do check for the no logging option because you don't want to have that empty passwords again so we are etc default login and pass required so I just change it back to what it was because uh, I hope this helps uh, if you have uh, uh, problems or you want to check the actual instructions from the Oracle's document side it has more uh, more details on different scenarios and uh, especially if your terminal is not working or if you have like a boot image to boot from uh, so if you want to set your terminal properly uh, so this works for me in my situation so in your situation if you are using different interfaces to access your console or if your console is on actually a physical device things might be a little bit different so check the link I'll paste the link down the video uh, below the video you can check it and you can uh, see more stuff in there uh, but basically just remember if you don't run this command BADM command will not succeed and uh, you might also have a look at the instructions on how to stop a system for recovery purposes if you remember the root uh, password that's a handy thing to do if you have problems with multi-booting uh, multi-user booting milestone uh, that can be really handy thank you very much for watching and have a great time